May of 1990, over a million indigenous people brought the country of Ecuador almost to a standstill. They walked off their jobs, blocked roads, and marched on the capital city of Quito. They had come over land rights. Luis Macas was one of the principal leaders of the peaceful uprising which led to negotiations with the government, the first time this had ever happened. The uprising of 1990 reinforced the struggles over land. Eventually, this led to a favorable outcome for the people. The uprising was born in regions like the highlands of the Andes Mountains. This is home to Macas's people, the Quichua. After centuries of outside rule, the Quichua have lost much of their land to large landowners. The people who lived around this area had no land or just enough land for their house and nothing more. And since they had no land, they went to work in the cities like Quito. So the people organized so that they could gain land. Without land to cultivate, the people cannot live. Although they are 45% of Ecuador's population, indigenous people wield little political or economic power. The uprising signaled a dramatic shift in that power relationship. Since then, Indians have carried out more massive demonstrations led by Marcus's group the Confederation of Indian Nationalities of Ecuador. He is fighting against the current because he has to draw attention to his culture and the need to respect his people in an environment in which that respect has not existed before. The indigenous movement is credited with influencing the government to redistribute millions of acres of land. The Quichua families that now communally own and farm this land have reintroduced ancient agricultural methods that protect and conserve the earth. Pesticides are now banned. Marcus has brought his fight for indigenous land rights to this region of Ecuador called the Oriente, perhaps the richest biological zone on the planet. At stake here is the very survival of the country's Amazonian forest. Esto para nosotros significa La muerte, no? This represents to us death, the death of nature, the death of everything. 25 years of oil exploration have left a devastating legacy in the Oriente. Millions of gallons of toxic waste and oil have been released into the Oriente, contaminating its rivers and threatening the health of its inhabitants. Esto es un veneno para toda esa gente. This is a poison for all of the people, and these people continue to wash themselves and drink the water, knowingly or not, because they have no other alternatives. In 1992, Marcus got the government to grant legal title to three million acres of homeland for the indigenous people of the Oriente. But the land agreement with the government did not cover subsoil rights which means the government can still explore for oil. Marcus is trying to influence negotiations between oil companies and the government over new leasing rights. But the odds are against him. Marcus is undaunted. He believes his people will prevail because the weight of their history is behind them. We each have a duty to honor the legacy of our ancestors. This is why I am here, to carry on the ideas of my forefathers. It's all about searching for justice and balance between man and nature. That is our fight, nothing more. For outstanding environmental achievement in South Central America, a 1994 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Luis Marcus of Quito, Ecuador.